In this part in this mini-series we're exploring how polyphasic sleeping in of itself affects the mortality and well-being of people. Uh, if you haven't seen the introductory video to this series, I encourage you to do so, since you will get valuable information for how evidence is gathered and with what we have in mind in this series. Uh, the link to that video will be in the description, but regardless. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So the focus on this will on this part will be how sleeping in a siesta pattern leads to the to a decreased mortality rate. Um, and as well as some other parts, but but let's start with this one, okay. A phenomenal article by um, Androniki et al. Uh, titled Siesta in Healthy Adults and Coronary Mortality in the General Population is supporting the notion that polyphasic sleeping is healthier than monophasic sleeping, especially since the sample group was healthy adults, and we'll explore that a bit later. But the study had quite a large uh, sample size, namely 23,681 people who had no history of any coronary heart diseases, strokes, or cancer at all. Uh, these people were then followed up for a bit over six years and the researchers looked at how the daytime naps of these people affected the mortality rate correlated to those specific diseases. So the findings indicated that men who frequently took uh, naps of any duration had a 37% smaller chance to die off of coronary heart diseases than those who didn't nap at all. And even people who only napped sporadically had a 12% ch smaller mortality rate. This is quite telling that sleeping during the day lowers the coronary mortality rate of people and thus an excellent proof that polyphasic sleeping is healthier than monophasic sleeping. Now, it should be noted that there are diseases that cause people to fragment their sleep or to increase uh, a buildup of homeo homeostatic pressure, uh, which causes them to sleep during the day. Um, an example of diseases like this would be dementia. Uh, however, in these cases, it's not the act of napping that will reduce your health, but instead the disease in of itself. Uh, the forced naps are only a byproduct of the disease, and therefore you might find some papers that claim that people who take siestas had a higher mortality rate than monophasic people, but that only applies to the sick population, okay? And the siesta is not the part that's responsible for the degradation, but merely an effect of it. You know, correlation and causation and all that. But because the study examined healthy people, the negative effects from diseases that cause people to nap more in general uh, were, could be avoided and the results were therefore more accurate. In other words, there seems to be a correlation between uh, diseases and the necessity to nap. But as long as these cases are circumvented, napping is very healthy. Great, so let's move over to another interesting investigation either into whether polyphasic sleeping is healthier than monophasic sleeping. This time we'll look at how the siesta in an adaptation to disease, or how it is an adaptation to disease, and how that could show that polyphasic sleeping is healthier than monophasic sleeping. Okay, so the claim about the siesta being an adaptation to disease is extracted from the article Is the siesta an adaptation to disease? written by T. Lynn Barone in 2000. The purpose of, the, of this article was to find a significant relationship between the occurrence of the siesta and certain environmental factors, like whether starvation was present, if a region was tempered, or whether malaria was present in the country. The only relation the author was able to find was between siestas and malaria, where 80% of countries that practiced the siesta were also plagued by malaria. That's huge, and clearly telling that the fact that siestas arise in places where malaria is present. Uh, but why is that? Well, what this means is that there's some internal property 
with the siesta that protects people from diseases. Whether it's the social isolation, a boost in the immune system or something else. Regardless of what the reason is, the paper clearly shows a positive effect from adopting a siesta in order to stay free from diseases easier. Because why else would siestas have occurred in these countries? Now, what would be really cool to see is whether siestas have occurred in these countries uh, from other diseases too, uh, which this paper doesn't unfortunately investigate. But hey, all you can go and try to adapt to siesta and then report to me how often you were sick compared to when you were monophasic, right? <laughs> Great, it's a deal. In all seriousness, if you're interested in a deeper analysis of this research paper, there's a research reading discussion recorded where Discord user Sleepy Girl uh, talks about this paper in depth. If you're interested in checking it out, the link to that video will be in the description. Okay, so we've established that siestas reduce your mortality and protect people from malaria. Great, but that's not all. Let's jump into some health concerns or health concerning aspects too, uh, namely how napping prevents Alzheimer's and strokes, which is extremely cool. And we can start about uh, we can start talking about the Alzheimer's correlation. So the first study called Associations between retrospective recalled napping behavior and later development of Alzheimer's disease association with APOE genotypes is written by Asada et al. The focus on this paper is to show whether habitual napping uh, affects the development of Alzheimer's uh, for people with a gene that increases the likelihood to develop Alzheimer's later in life. As you probably know, Alzheimer's is hereditary, so if napping is good at preventing it, that would be huge. And lo and behold, that's exactly what this study found. If you sleep uh, short naps during the day, you have a smaller chance to develop Alzheimer's later in life. Great! These results were confirmed by Lee et al. in the study Intermediate but not extended afternoon naps may preser preserve cognition in Chinese older adults, which found that people who napped for shorter than 90 minutes during the day preserved their cog cognition better than people who didn't nap at all when they were older. Fortunately, pretty much all polyphasic sleep schedules uh, that we have are built with daytime naps that are either 20 or 90 minutes long. And these studies are great evidence uh, that these naps are healthier than not napping or sleeping in a monophasic sleep pattern. But what's the relation between strokes and napping? Well, a brand new paper by Yosef Mohammed titled Siesta and Risk for Ischemic Stroke results from a case control study has shown that siestas are associated with a lower risk for ischemic strokes too. This study compared the risk of getting a stroke while napping uh, to the risk of getting a stroke while not napping regularly. Sorry, napping regularly also. Uh, napping regularly to not napping regularly. And showed that when you nap habitually, you actually have a lower risk of getting a stroke. So this is extremely good. Not only does napping help prevent Alzheimer's, but it also helps with preventing strokes. If you have either disease in your family, uh, just hit polyphasic sleep up and hopefully you won't develop any of those in the future. <laughs> Nobody in our seriousness. These are important topics that I don't w and I don't want any of you dying prematurely or developing diseases. So yeah, you should now hopefully have a bit more information to add to your arsenal when somebody claims that polyphasic sleeping is unhealthy without backing it up with anything. You will now be able to tell them that napping decreases the coronary mort mortality of people, that uh, siestas spontaneously develop in countries where malaria is present. Uh, uh, to help people avoid getting infected from it, and that napping helps prevent Alzheimer's and strokes. Great. 
that's all for this video. In the next video in this series we will examine how the lifestyle of polyphasic sleepers is healthier than the lifestyle of monophasic sleepers and how you can show that polyphasic sleeping is healthier than monophasic sleeping with this or at least the lifestyle of polyphasic sleepers. You don't want to miss that one and I suggest you consider subscribing so you don't miss when we release that video. Okay, anyways I'll be seeing you in that video. Remember to have pleasant naps people!